What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy here, Wesley from A Connection TV here on YouTube, the one place on the World Wide Web where we actually adopt similar connections about our differences. And welcome to my channel. If this is your first time seeing me, definitely follow me on all social media, Twitter and Instagram at A Connection TV. I'm here to talk to y'all about an updated, my updated point of view of Big Brother. I think we're in week eight. I don't know. I, I kind of go in and out of Big Brother now. Uh, the season has lost me. <laughs> it has. But, you know, I watched, like, the Elimination uh, episode. So I watched the Elimination episode today. Obviously, we know that Quinn got eliminated. Uh, but, yeah, let's chop it up. Mackenzie is abusing the veto because she won the OTEV competition in the first round. Everybody's calling that, like, the worst competition ever because everybody got the first question incorrect. But anyways... Angela ends up using the veto. Mackenzie ends up using the veto on Angela for the third time in a row. Three different people, all white, have taken Angela off the block. No. Yeah, Tucker, Leah, and now Mackenzie have taken Angela off the block. Okay. And you know what's interesting? Um, you know, I, I have my initial comments about T Core and the whole. Cedric thing. And since then, I've been like off of Big Brother because I just really, I, I've been off Big Brother. But ever since then, Rubina, t -Core, and Chemo and the women all make mention of the race that they are, how they want to represent their community, how they don't want colored people on the block, people of color on the block. Or how all women should stick together and get out all the men. So regardless of how upset y'all were about my comments of T-Core, it always comes back to race. The group or categorization that you're in, the category that you're in, or the gender that you're assigned to. No matter what people of like mind, sound, body, all of that culture, all of whatever you want to attach to the group. Always find commonality amongst, if they, if they find common, commonality amongst a person, they either want to save them or champion the group that they represent. Chemo in both exit interviews, talking about his fact, the fact that he's gay and the fact that he, his ethnicity to be a factor and representation on why we should keep him in the house. Okay. All the women have had a conversation about there being an all woman alliance. Why? Because they're all women. Okay, T. Gore and Rabina have said they, they don't want to put people of color on the block, but they got off Cedric. Okay, Tucker, Leah, and Angela, I mean, and McKenzie saved Angela. They want to say it's because Angela is an easy target and will always be put on the block and they can, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But the common denominator amongst the four is that she's white. Okay. And going up against somebody, a person of color. Let's be clear. But anyways, y'all want to act like color is not a factor, and it is what it is. I mean, she's always going to be a factor. Period. Chelsea put some Quinn saying that after she got word of a specific conversation going on in the house, she was unsure about him and didn't know if she could trust him. So Quinn goes up on the block. Quinn is dumbfounded and shocked. Then we get a video footage of Chelsea crying and Cam goes to like, you know, hug her and they all comfort her because in her heart of hearts, she likes Quinn, but she felt that she, that was the right decision for her to make. Let's be clear. Quinn has been known to lie to everyone. So is he really trustworthy? Not necessarily. And eventually Quinn will want to come after Chelsea. But even though he had talks about doing that, in my mind, I felt like Quinn would have been a better save than the three people that she decided to save. For whatever reason, these three people, Chelsea, blew up your Pentagon Alliance is the reason why Cedric is not in there anymore. And they've been untouched for the weeks. So why are we keeping them as a strong unit in the house? You really think that T-Core, Rubina, and Kimo are going to save you? I don't think so. But whatever. But who's more of a threat? Leah and Quinn or the threesome? I don't know. It's kind of hard to... I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. I know that if Leah wins head of household, um, Tikor and Chelsea are going up. I know if Angela wins head of house, household, Tikor 
and Chelsea, I feel like T-Core and Chelsea are going up. So this is really, really interesting about the dynamic and the choices that Chelsea has decided to make to uphold her game. Cam defends Chelsea's decision and says that Quinn ratted out the Pentagon, and that's the reason why Cedric is no longer in the game. That is a fact. Quinn is stating that, I mean, Cam is stating that he does not care who goes between the two of them, Chemo or Quinn, but one of them has to go. I don't know, but I feel like no matter what y'all want to say, the women are outnumbering the men two to what, seven? However many people are left in this house. Cam, I don't think he really has a shot like that to last that long. And Chemo is protected by two chicks. So I feel like the hot targets that are going to get out of the house sooner than later are going to be the rest of the black people. t Core because she's a threat. Chelsea, because she's a threat. And Cam, because he's a viable man. They don't really see Kimo like that as a threat because he's a gay dude. He keeps saying he's gay. And he's for the women. So Cam, out of here. Chelsea, out of here. t Core out of here. I feel like those are going to be the next nominations. I could be wrong. I also think that the top three people to get HOH is either going to be Angela, Kimo, or Cam. That's going to be the next HOH. Rounding that out with a McKenzie or a Leah kind of situation. That's practically everybody was. But no, seriously, I think it's either going to be Angela, Cam, or Kimo. I don't know why my heart of hearts is telling me that one of those three are going to get HOH, but that's what I believe. Leah talks to Quinn. She wants to try to keep him in the game. Angela goes to Leah. Leah is upset with Angela, acting like she's about to cry because Angela sold her out. Angela then goes to Chelsea and is like, well, what in our conversation led you to believe that Leah was the ringleader in this or whatever the case may be? They play a, an edit or a clip of what the conversation was between Angela and uh, Chelsea. And Angela did state that Quinn and Leah were a part of the conversation. It wasn't just heavily, uh, you know, intense on Leah's behalf. Angela then goes talk to Leah, and Leah's like, we got to get rid of the top, the core three, T-Core, Rubina, and Chemo, you think? Then the people have, like, this dance moment, then they have, like, this truth, uh, marry, marry, kill, or kiss kind of game with the people left on the, uh, the panel board of photos or whatever, and, you know, Chelsea's like, I would marry Quinn. Quinn is very, you know, animated and very, like, into, you know, himself or whatever. Then there's a moment where they're all in the bathroom and they're like, you need to kiss someone from the kiss portion of the marry, kiss, a kill thing. And Quinn's like, well, I'll kiss Leah. Y'all need to get her in here. And they all get Leah in the room to kiss Quinn and Leah runs out of the room. She's like, no, I'm not doing that. And she runs out of the room. Quinn obviously feels some sort of way, but he acts like he doesn't. But then he has a conversation with Leah and he whispers in her ear, are we not a thing because you're really not into me? Or are we not a thing because you think it'd be awkward in the house to create a showmance? And then Leah says it's the latter of the two. And I'm like, girl, you clearly aren't really into him like that. So stop playing around. But then she gets in the post-confessional and says that she has to admit that she does kind of have a crush on him. I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. We knew right away from the jump that she liked big boys. And so Quinn is nowhere near a big boy. So I highly think that she's just playing the game and she's allowing him to feel whatever he feels that he needs to feel so that if she's a, in the final two, it's a vote. That's I, that's all I think that it is. Talks to everyone trying to vie for votes, which is good that he's still playing the game. Right now, there's not there's nine people in the house. Okay, great. So it's a three versus three versus three. Angela, Leah, and Quinn versus McKenzie, Cam, and Chelsea versus t Core, Rubina, and Chemo. But let's be clear. The strongest out of the three is t Core, Rubina, and Chemo. They're never going to go against each other. The other six have opportunities of going against each other. I think Cam will never put up Chelsea. I think McKenzie will never put up Chelsea. I think Angela and Leah are a wild card and cannot be trusted. Yeah. That's what I think. In Quinn's speech, I think he was just rambling on and on and on about, you know, stuff that had no bearing of whether or not someone was going to vote for him or not. I felt like he should have mentioned the core three, 
clearly should have mentioned the core three, but he didn't. Maybe because he likes them kind of still or whatever, or he's had the visionaries that never really amounted to much of anything. This man went on record saying that he had seven final twos. What in the freaking heck? It's crazy. I guess he did need to go out to get out the house. But I believe that Tico Rubina and Kimo are more of a threat than not a threat. And let's be clear. Out of the people left, none of them have won HOH except for Angela, Tico, and Chelsea. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. Quinn gets voted out of the house and, you know, Rubina tries to give him a friendship bracelet and he's not having it. He said, I don't want the friendship base, and you can keep it. I'm like, oh, I mean, you know, I would say the same thing. His exit was more along the lines of the exit that I would give if I were to be kicked out. Only way that I would be kicked out is that I would have to be backdoored because they're not going to have the cojones to kick me out like full outright. You know what I'm saying? And I would have played in every uh, BBAI arena and I would have won and I'll play in every veto and I'll probably get like just about every veto. That's just what I feel. And that's just what it's going to be. That's just what it's going to be. Quinn is the first member of the jury. And Jerry asking Quinn to touch his hair at the end was so cringe. I usually like Jerry, but he's like the substitute host for like every freaking show. It's ridiculous. And his vibe is always not my vibe. But you know what's interesting? I didn't miss Jenny. J Julie. I didn't miss Julie and... I wasn't excited for Jerry. Like, I don't know. Anyways, leave your comments below. What did you think about this episode of Big Brother? Do this.